so we're going to look at a problem now where we're going to find the length of a vertical curve um, that passes through a fixed point. And this time we're given the elevation of the fixed point and the station of the fixed point. So uh, we'll be able to use that information to find the length of that curve. So to start off with this problem, I'm going to go ahead and sketch it out just to get a feeling for what it looks like. So I have a 4% downgrade. So that's coming in here, uh, minus 4%. And that's intersecting a 3% upgrade. So here's my plus 3%. And so where they intersect is that point of vertical intersection. And we know some information about this point of vertical in intersection. It's got an elevation of 120 feet, and its station location is 67 plus 00. zero. Now we're told we want to pass a vertical curve through a point. Um, so we're going to put a curve up here, and it has to go through a point at an elevation of 128 feet at a station 68 plus 00. zero. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw that in here, call this point E. And here's my vertical curve that's going to come down here and go through that point E. And the information I'm given about point E is I know its elevation is 128 feet and its station is 68 plus 00. zero. All right, so I want to find the length of this curve that's going to pass through that point. And really, I have all the information I need because I can use the geometry that I've been given on our formula sheet that relates the elevations um, at the station of interest at that point that we want to go through. Um, and we're going to look at the elevations that would be along the uh, forward line, the PVC. Uh, line, um, and we'll call that point G, and then the point that would be along the uh, backward tangent line, that F point, and we'll be able to relate those to each other to find a dimensionless factor S, and then use that factor S to find the length of that curve. There's one more factor in this equation that's called lowercase d, and that d is just the distance between the station of the um, point that we want to pass the curve through and the station that occurs at the point of vertical intersection. So go ahead and draw that point on as well. So we'll call that point D and we know its station is going to be that 67 and then we're going to have a couple other points here that are going to be of interest. We're going to have this point F again that's at that same station but is along this 3% grade. And then we're going to continue this minus 4% grade down here and call this point G. And so we're going to want to find these elevations at point E, F, and G. So again, we can find that dimensionless factor S and use that factor to find the length of the vertical curve. So let's start off by finding this small d. Again, that's just the difference between the stations at point E and point D. So that D is going to equal 68 plus 00, zero minus 67 plus 00. zero. So that's just 1 plus 00, zero or 100 feet. So that's going to be my D value. And then to find my S value, like I said, I'm going to have to know these elevations at each of these. I, I know the elevation at E that was given to me of 128 feet. To find the elevation at F, I'm just going to follow that 3% grade from that point of vertical intersection. And so I know that the elevation at that point is 120 feet. So I'm going to travel along that grade for that distance D of 100 feet. So at that 100 feet, but then I'm going to go up that 0.03% from that 100 feet. So that's going to get me to a final elevation F of 123 feet. And then I'm going to follow that same procedure to find the elevation at this point G, which is along as if I continued past the point of vertical intersection and stayed on that 4% downgrade. So I'm going to start at that 120 feet and this time I'm going to subtract, right? I'm going down from there. So I'm going to subtract that 100-foot distance to 
times the 0 0.04 uh, downgrade there. And that's going to give me an elevation of 116 feet. Okay, so now I know these elevations for these different points. Um, I found that distance between the PVI and that point of intersection. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that formula that relates all of these values where L equals 2D S plus 1 over S minus 1, um, where we know that S, slide that up a little bit, where S is equal to the square root of the elevation at E minus the elevation at G over the elevation at E minus the elevation at F. And we found all those elevations, so we can put those values in and solve for S first. So we have 128 feet minus 116 feet over 128 feet minus 123 feet. And simplifying that, S is equal to the square root, we can see that right there, square root of 12 uh, over 5. Simple subtraction there. And so we'll solve that out to uh, four decimal places. So S is equal to uh, 1.5492. So now we have a value for S, we have a value for D, we can plug them into this equation for L. So we have two times 100 feet, and then we'll take one plus that, so it's 2.5492 over 1.5492 minus one, which just gives me 0 0.5492. And solving for that equation gives me 928 0.33 feet, which is the length of that curve. Um, if you want to write in stations, 9 plus 28.33 stations. So just to take another look at what we did from the formula sheet, uh, we were given these grades um, coming down and exiting the point of vertical intersection. Um, we were given this E elevation and station. So we were able to find this distance between these two um, points, E and D. That was the 100-foot distance. We were able to find the elevations at F and G just by starting at the elevation at the PVI and continuing along the grades. And then knowing all those elevations, we were able to find this dimensionless S um, factor and then plug it in to find the length of our vertical curve.